So go ahead and close your eyes and sit well in your chair. That's pretty loose, but it's good to feel your sits bones in the chair and your feet on the floor. Bring the weight of your shoulder girdle over your hips and tuck your chin a bit. And close your eyes and sink into your body, into your internal landscape. And with your next breath, gather up all of the actions and intentions you've used to arrive here and now. Inhale and gather them. Exhale them out, your feet back to the earth. You don't need them anymore. One more time, inhale and gather. Exhale, out your feet, give them back to the earth. And with your next inhale, gather up all of your plans and anticipations for the rest of the evening, the week, even further into the future. Inhale and gather them. Exhale them off to the side. They'll still be there when we're done. Inhale and gather. Exhale off to the side. Good. So the couple, three of you who I haven't seen before, with these free classes I give every eight weeks, they are introductions to the following series, but I always want you to have a good practice, even if you don't continue on. So it's not a sales pitch, but some things I have to abbreviate or just present verbally because they're going to be unrolling over, in this case, um, six weeks instead of seven. And uh, yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. So, the centerpiece of this series and tonight is going to be practicing with your dreams. In Taoist practice, I touched on this a little bit in the last series, it's quite different than Buddhist practice. Buddhist dream practice can be consuming and exhausting because you are practicing to escape samsara before you exit this life so you don't have to repeat uh, another life. You reach freedom. In Taoist practice, yeah, you don't want to come back. You do want to cultivate yourself so that you can become one with the energies of the Tao rather than going back to a human or animal or even a bush birth. But in general, Tao's practice is a little more gentle or soft or maybe lazy sometimes. And that certainly applies to the dream practice also. But another aspect of the Taoist view of life and everything applies to the dream practice in that everything's integrated. So you don't pluck one part of yourself out of your life. So you would not think about your dreams, maybe journal them, maybe pursue lucid dreaming, and then wander off into everyday life. <laughs> Dreaming is an important part of sleeping, which is an important part of your whole day. So <clears throat> I'll kind of give you an overview tonight and through the series. This is a whole day practice. We're going to have a morning Qigong practice. And before that, we're going to have little, um, I wouldn't call it a practice because then it becomes kind of practice heavy, but ways to help you wake up so that you don't lose touch with the dream and 
It's easing you into being awake. <clears throat> and I call it bed qigong and waking practice. And uh, some ways to stay connected and remember your dreams and record them. I'll share even tonight this idea of a dream gesture, which I shared uh, during the last series as well. The dream gesture is the royal road to lucid dreaming, but we're not gonna do a lot of harsh uh, chasing of the lucid dream. I will teach you things you can do to pursue that. And I will also share with you why it's not so important. <laughs> And then the, the dream gesture, which also has the function of repeatedly asking ourselves, am I dreaming? So it, it is through the day and it is more, that is uh, similar to the Buddhist dream practice in that we dream when we're asleep, we're probably dreaming now, who knows which we're doing. Um, and then in the evening, we're going to use the microcosmic orbit as our evening practice. So those of you who've taken that with me before know that it can be used in many ways. It can be your main meditation practice you do every morning for years, but it's also a way to balance and settle your energies regardless of what's happened to them at work or at play. And while we balance and settle our energies, we are cultivating. Yes, we're cultivating more energy, but in fact, it's more important to cultivate resilient energy, ballast in your body so that you're not always draining and filling and draining and filling. You have this stability and centeredness. And then We'll also explore a variety of what I've come to call bridging practices where you, we're going to do tonight, give you the option of doing the microcosmic orbit and I'll introduce it. It'll be like a, an intro orbit, sitting or you can lay down. And then in the series, I invite you to do the microcosmic orbit and then the bridging practices that we'll be doing together, laying down. Uh, at 8.30, I'm just going to sign off and you can either get up and return to your evening or you can float off into a nap or your evening sleep. What we don't have time for tonight, um, I don't know if it's a time thing, but um, it's going to be more fluid once the series starts. It's going to be the first time that I use breakout rooms and after we do our circulation set morning practice together and I'll be adding depth and details to that as we go on we're going to get into groups of two or three ideally two but if there's an odd number of people there'll be one with three and you'll be together for 20 minutes and each person will have 10 minutes and this is in lieu of buying one of those dream interpretation books or doing psychoanalysis, you bring a dream. It doesn't have to be a new one. It can be one from long ago or one from last night. And you speak it. You share it with your partner. And it's a structured exchange. The partner doesn't interrupt. If something's super unclear, you can ask a question, but you just positively receive the other's dream. And then the partner gives response, but it's very, and there's more structure to how we respond, but there's, we avoid the same. We avoid interpretation, psychoanalysis, like a, lately I had three different dreams with a white cat in them. So I might bring that trio of dreams centered on the white cat to my partner. And the partner would respond 
we almost want to begin every sentence with, if that were my dream. I might uh, wonder why white cat, why, you know, why now? But very gentle. And after we are 20 minutes, two to two, we come back together and there's a meditation where we can re-enter the dream. And I think that will be about 20 minutes also. But that's going to depend, like in the beginning, if I have people who need support with the orbit, it might be shorter. But as everyone gets their sea legs with the orbit, we're going to expand that time that we meditate into the dream. And structure on how to do that also. You wander, you're curious, you see where the energy pulls you, what seems brighter or different, and then you journal it, either in class or later. And these re-experiences, um, they may or may not bring more meaning. But ultimately, what I want you to leave the series with is a stronger and more loving relationship to your dreaming self. So I have some pictures. So we don't really think about who, who is me. I mean, we have to have a me because it's hard to function in our culture without uh, that pronoun. But in Taoism, the edges of us are kind of fuzzy. Mostly, we're not mostly, probably an aspect of why is that in Taoism, Tao practice, we are so focused on the energetics of things. So energy, even in our Western thinking, pretty hard to put it in a jar, you know, pretty hard to file it away. It's, it's fluid and moves and has a life of its own. Well, that's true also of the energies in our body and our psyche. This, I guess this is a Venn diagram. This is a, a way to look at us. And the reason I would suggest you do not spend a lot of time interpreting your dreams. You see that smallest circle is our conscious mind, our reasoning or ego mind. And that's what we bring to interpretation. Look how big our unconscious dreaming subconscious mind is. So why would you use a little part of yourself to understand such a big and frankly mysterious part of yourself? I don't think you're going to get too far. Another aspect of the ego mind is that it, it uh, exists when it makes meaning. And it makes meaning to feel safe. So maybe you're chopping off a lot of beauty in your dreams as you interpret it to make your ego mind more comfortable. This larger circle in encompassing all of it would be so awareness, aliveness, jing, qi, shen are the three forms of energy. It's kind of your big self, big mind. Uh, some of the contemporary Buddhist teachers use that phrase. And then larger than that is the collective awareness, the Tao. Let's see. So I made this second Venn diagram. So within that middle-sized circle, all of these things can be said to be making up me. And uh, last time I showed this, the red circle seemed a little confusing, so I added a little bit more onto it. But our memory, let's say our remembered self, our dreaming self, our big unconscious, and also our karma intersects also with our experience of 
the moment a reality. The body experiences our emotions, our mood, our thoughts, our belief, and what our chi is doing that we can perceive also. So that's basically where I'm coming from with these practices. Any questions before I shift gears a little bit? Okay. So the Qigong we're going to do, Laura, your mouth was open. Were you wanting to ask a question? Yes, I couldn't find the button. Um, so we're not looking for interpretation, but then in thinking about it and sharing it with someone, what are we looking for? Can we differentiate interpretation from understanding? So you know how often I use anthropomorphizing and uh, situations and relationships we know and understand to understand better things that are unfamiliar or even mysterious. So I think it's helpful to think of your dreaming self as a precious friend. So if you were conversing with this friend, would you in your mind or in your words say, oh, you said that, but really you meant this. Or gee, you said that, and I think it comes from your childhood, blah, blah, blah. You wouldn't, wouldn't do that. Right. You receive the friend's words and images and dreams with curiosity and openness. And I imagine slowly over time, uh, you might come to conclusions. You might certainly come to an understanding. Um, yeah. Great. So ultimately, that's what I want for you is to add one more thing to say just before I forget, even though I didn't ask this. Often people say, oh, I don't remember my dreams or I remember them for a moment and then I forget them. I have found the more attention you pay to your dreaming, the more available they are. So it's same metaphor of the friend. If you have a friend that you're always kind of, uh, okay, whatever, I'll see you later. There's not going to be a lot coming from her. But if you have a friend that you sit down and connect with regularly, there's going to be a strong bond. There's going to be a lot of exchange. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I learn as much as I teach. So last, I don't remember, it was a winter time. I took a shamanic dreaming course and I hadn't been remembering my dreams much. As soon as I went to the first class in that and reopened that door, I was remembering dream, multiple dreams every night. It's like the friend says, oh, you're listening. I have stuff to tell you. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, bring that to it as well. Thank you, that's really helpful. Yep, you're welcome. Any other questions? So let's stand up and do, even though this is a going to be our morning practice, it is about clearing and lubricating and getting your chi and your fluids and your blood moving. So it's not one of these qigong that I don't recommend for the evening that might keep you up. It shouldn't do that at all. It can be done actually any time at all. So there is a Chinese saying, actually there are probably thousands of Chinese sayings. This is where the cliche comes from, right? Um, that we have three hearts, not one. We have our automatic heart here. We don't have to tell it to beat. We don't have to massage it so it moves our blood. We also have two manual hearts in our calves. And if we can just flex or move our calf muscles, it's enormously important for bringing blood back up, lymph movement, all kinds of things. The way we do, 
So this is called the limp, limp rocking, you could call it. First, we start by bringing our weight forward and back. So on the ball of our foot, on the heel of our foot. And once you get that, feel that rhythm, push it a little further so your heel actually comes up, your toes actually come up. And we're going to work ourselves ourselves up our body, adding major joints. So that we don't really get much change if we add our knees, but if we add our hips, that broadens the movement. So the way we add our hips is as we're on our heels, we actually even bend forward a little bit. We crease qua here. And as we go onto our toes, we push our hips out. Bend and push. So we maintain the foot movement. We can't actually do this if we stop rocking our feet. But push those hips and pull. And then we add our waist. So really push your belly out like you're pretending to be pregnant or you've had an enormous meal. And then, yes, you continue to bend at the hip, but you also bend at the waist. So you're really, oof, bending and pushing. And stay with it. Then we add our chest. And the easiest way, is it easy? I don't know. It's a nice way to open and close your chest is use your thumbs. So you turn your thumbs out and your chest opens. You turn your thumbs back and your scapula opens. So push everything and open chest. And now that the body movement is bigger, you're engaging your balance a little bit. So just pay attention to where balance becomes iffy. You can pull back, make the movement slightly smaller, but I suggest you challenge your balance. And the last element is the head. And that's simply looking up, chin down. Now this one, I think because the vision is, you know, being thrown around, uh, the balance is even further challenged. So if you want to keep heel and toes on the floor and just rock, but still pushing out, curling forward. As soon as you can, return to lifting your heels and toes because that's where you're really working those hearts in your calf muscles. Would you be able to show in a profile view? Yes. So standing, heel, toe, heel, toe. I, I will set up another camera so you can see my full body, but uh, my door is messed up, so I couldn't do it today. Uh, and then I add my hips, so here and here. And then the waist. And then the chest. And adding the head. So we. Thank you. You're welcome. We end the same way we start. So we keep rocking, but we drop our head. We we'll keep that chest opening and closing. And then we relax our chest, keeping uh, waist and hips. Then relaxing your waist, focusing on your hips and your feet. 
and then back to just the feet. There's a strategy there in that we have kind of entertained our monkey mind, but we have extended the amount of time that we are rocking on our feet. So this pumping is hugely important. Our heart is a pump, yes, but a lot of the other pumping that we do energetically, lymph-wise, other fluids, comes from moving our body. So you could, uh, those of you who've taken other Qigong with me, you might remember um, this one where we have the turtle back and the bird chest. So what if you just added foot pumping to this? This you're missing. So in the crease of your, between your leg and your torso, it's a lot of lymph nodes there. So you're not getting so much pumping with them, but a tremendous amount up here, more lymph nodes here, lymph nodes heart and lungs, beautiful variation. So after lymph rocking, we do something called throwing the bones. We start out by sweeping the floor with our foot. So it's kind of a sideway kick, but you wanna feel the floor and see how lazy it is, right? It's a Taoism. Taoists are lazy. This is a beautiful example. And then same arm, same leg. Add your arms. So you're getting a soft twist and across the body. And one thing you can do to bring balance benefit is stop. Oop, hard to stop. Freeze where you are and go again. Do the same thing, but instead of sweeping in front of your body, sweep behind. So almost like you see the dogs uh, after they poop in the park, but across, not just back. And same, arm goes behind, same arm, same leg. And stop. And the third chapter is twisting, just twist. So you bend your knees, plant your feet. Bending your knees stabilizes your hips. You don't wanna do this. It's, it's nice, but it's not what we're doing. Stabilize your hips and throw your arms. Just as a turtle back, bird chest, does beautiful things for our heart and lungs. This twisting is fantastic for your liver, pancreas, stomach, spleen, all those organs right across here, and your kidneys in the back. So I'm slapping my body very gently. There's a lot of hitting in Qigong, and it's about vibration. So I'm giving my spleen and liver in front, and the back of my hand is gently hitting my kidneys and back, sending those vibrations into our organs. And we can go up further. So we go up to the bottom of our lungs, the bottom of our ribs, to our adrenals and back. and then up. So you should not hit your breast. 
uh, Aaron, any guys watching this, you can do mid chest and that's great for your lungs and heart. You can also do this spot right here is lung two. When we vibrate lung two, it sends positive chi into our whole lung. So we hit and in back, we're hitting our kidneys again, kidneys and lungs. And you can then make these soft little baby fists and a little impact with the fist. Still should not hurt, should never hurt, but the fist slap goes deeper, goes deeper into the organs and can even vibrate the bones a little bit. And we work our way back down to the liver, spleen, kidneys. Let's go down further to the intestines, large and small, the sacrum, lumbar and back. Let's stay here. This feels good and needed. Good. Yes. And slowly come to natural stance, eyes closed, and just observe how your body feels. The next chapter is kicking. So lift, kick. Don't kick like this, like a, a Moulin Rouge dancer. You lift your leg and kick. So kick pointed toes, pulls on the front muscles. It also activates the frontal meridians as you do. And put your hands on your hips. Then heel, kick with your heel, activating the back of the body meridians and giving a little tug on those tendons. Then side diagonal, so kicking like this. I always like to kick without doing anything with my foot first, and then I'll add point and heel. A couple times with each variation is fine. And then the last of the three from the front is out to the side. It feels funny. That's okay. Kicking. I always feel like maybe a goat or something. And then point. Heel. And then we do the same three directions in toward the back. So kicking straight back. And you're still lifting and kicking. Point. Heel. And diagonal. Heel and point. And then back side. So, let's see. And stand. Closing eyes and checking in with your body. One of my teachers says Qigong works. There are two reasons that you may not have any change. One is you don't do it. You know, people came to him and said, oh, you told me this would do this, 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 and it didn't work. How much did you do it? I did it three times. These are daily practices. Lifelong practices. It's like, would you brush your teeth once and think you're done? 
No. And the other is that things do change. Your body does have more ease, more strength, more flexibility. But the change is slow and subtle, and we don't notice. So we stop and be with how our body feels during our practice. So the last one can make you uh, a little self-conscious. That's OK. We've done all of these pretty much standing in one spot. And I only have about four feet square here. If you have a larger space or if next time you're outside, a larger space is kind of more fun. But we move. So. Uh, the first movement is a trot. So this little front and back, moving, but not caring to get anywhere. And then side to side, the first one is step out, bring foot. So you're not crossing your legs. But put a little hop into it. You're also not trying to, you know, burn cowards. This is about circulation of the stuff of your body. And then the third and last is you do cross your legs. So one foot goes out, then behind. Out, deep, hot. And this would make more sense if I had a full body camera. Um, I will, but I don't. And the same, you can do that last one crossing in front instead of behind and combine. And stand the quiet and still. Stay. So with this class, instead of the breakout rooms, um, I'm going to spend a little more time describing how we'll use microcosmic orbit. But I think what I would like you to do is we'll just have a two to three minute meditation and open yourself up to any of your recent or aged dreams. I imagine that many of you came tonight with a dream in mind. Uh, open and see if that's still the case. Another one might arise, or you might uh, say, no, I want to sit with that one. So go ahead and sit well. So this has a general meaning. We do not take a rigid posture when we do Tao meditation, but we do want to be energetically uh, strong mm -hmm. and with good structure. So your feet are on the floor. I actually have a little step stool because my chair is a little high, but you want the feeling of touching the earth. And you want to be on your sits bones, not on your gonads and not on your spine. And if it sometimes it's helpful, even if you're very experienced, to roll back and feel that weight on your tailbone. Feel that weight on your gonads on the front of your bottom of your torso. And then come to your sits bones more precisely. Your abdomen is gently engaged. And your shoulders are more or less over your hips. So you heard me say a little while back, tuck your chin 
Yes, it's tucking your chin, but we're not bringing our head down. We want to bring our head back, but only so far as it is comfortable. Tongue is on the upper palate always. Take a couple of full body gentle breaths. With each exhale, release any tension, any held areas, any habits. Now that you're well-structured and relaxed, return to the dream you had in mind or open yourself to any dream you'd like to re-enter today. If nothing ha comes up, or if you generally have problems remembering dreams, you can use this time to simply invite the friendship of your dreaming self. Let your eyes flutter open and Jot down the dream or the fragment that you would like to re-enter. I'm going to give you five minutes with this. Uh, if you only need one, just relax after.
about 30 more seconds. So I want to give you more information about what I said about this being a whole day or a whole life dream practice. Because it can feel or sound rigid or overwhelming, and it's not really. When you wake up in the morning, you have to wake up, right? But we get to choose how we do it after that moment of just realizing we're awake. <clears throat> Saying that, I'm going to set it aside because really it makes more sense to begin our day in the evening. So um, our evening practice would be a microcosmic orbit. And I'm going to circle back around to. Uh, what that actually is for those of you who haven't done it in just a minute. But it is a meditation that can be three minutes or an hour. It's very flexible that way. And you can even at this point invite your dreaming self to be with you as you meditate and move energy. After your short, medium, or long, microcosmic orbit practice and that's generally done sitting but it certainly can be done when you're already in bed we want to move from this meditation from our main day into sleeping and dreaming in a beautiful way in the past i've uh, and this is, I think, best for people who have a little trouble transitioning. There is a practice of moving energy called the nine turns. It's a better image. It is great in you, when you have trouble sleeping because it is just complicated enough. Um, and while you are using this bringing your mind, your attention through these energetic pathways. You relax, you become drowsy, and you go to sleep. You can also do, do something as simple as skin breathing, bringing conscious awareness to your breath, using the visual image of the air going coming in through your pores, all the pores of your body, and leaving that way. This isn't invented, right? Our pores do take in all sorts of things and release all sorts of things. And lastly, uh, I suggest, and maybe we'll use this tonight, I often begin meditations by drawing my ancestors and descendants and teachers and what Lon Lee calls our karmic team in a circle, a protective circle around me. And you can do this around you before you float off to sleep. So that is the evening practice. It can take five minutes or 90 minutes. The waking practice, meaning the practice you engage in to wake up, I call it a bed qigong, and it's very simple. When you realize you're awake, and this would be after you've connected with your dreams, recording them, because once you start moving, you will lose a lot of the dream memory. You clench and, and splay your fingers and your toes very fast, over and over again, maybe 15, 20 times. This wakes up your nervous system and you will exit the bed more coordinated and grounded just by doing that. 
And I encourage you to share this with any elderly relatives or friends who have uh, whose bodies wake up more slowly than when they were younger. And add to that grasping your knees and rolling on your back, giving yourself a massage on your back in your bed. Just those two qigong are wonderful to begin your day. And then I leave it up to you. Do you have your tea or coffee and take care of your cats or dogs and then do your morning qigong or do you do your morning qigong right away? Weave it into your day. So circling back to recording the dreams, this is tricky. I I cannot write and I'm not, I don't feel completely okay with turning to technology as soon as I wake up, but having the recorder on my phone has allowed me to uh, record so many more dreams than I would have if I forced myself to use the traditional pen and paper or pencil and paper. But Experiment and find your own way. <clears throat> I would also suggest that last section. We're used to thinking of surreal narratives in our dreams, but you can have a dream that is a smell and a color. You can have a dream that's a, an echoing sound. Don't discard them as being only fragments or not you know, complete. Sometimes those can have real resonance. I'd like you to return to what you wrote. And before you do that, did anyone come up completely blank? Not have anything to work with. Did you raise your hand, Abby, or we were just, okay. Okay, good, then I don't have to go into that stuff. So we're going to, I think spend, we can spend 10 minutes. And this is a shamanic practice, I should tell you. The, the friendliness and gentleness kind of overarching attitude is, is Taoist, but this idea <clears throat> of journeying, of revisiting or visiting is shamanic across cultures. It's kind of beautiful that Tibetan sh shamanism, South American shamanism, shamanic Tao Taoism, all take this idea of energetically, meditatively having a journey, having a narrative that you follow. And uh, I invite you to re-enter the dream and journey with it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If it wasn't a narrative, it still can be journey. You know, say it was that smell and sound. Well, you're bringing your awareness, your meditative consciousness into that state where you hear the sound and the smell. You can move with it. You can move through it or around it. Um, this is the creative part where we're challenged to be creative but not make things up you know, and not go completely uh, away from the dream, honor the dream. Okay, so I will put up the moon for 10 minutes after I bring you in to that meditative space again. So sitting well, the same way. Tongue on upper palate. Just a gentle inhale, but deep and full. And as you gently exhale, invite tension, habitual holding, 
unnecessary thoughts to leave with that exhale. And open your heart, your mind, your memory, your body to your dream and your dreaming self. And begin by seeing, hearing, connecting with that first moment. Entering your dream being led by what attracts your attention. Where is the energy of the dream for you? find your mind has wandered, return to that moment. Stay with that moment and move forward if it feels right.
wherever you are in your process. Find a gentle way to complete if you're in the middle of revisiting. You can always return. Bring down heaven, so circling, inhaling up to the yang chi of the sun. Exhale, drawing it down through your body, gifting it to the earth. Second inhale up to the moon and the moon's light down to the earth. And lastly, the stars and the starlight. So I'll leave you to your thoughts unless you have questions. When we get going, I'm going to be a little more assertive, asking you how it went, what you felt about it, and so forth. For now, I would like to turn to the orbit. So the microcosmic orbit, we ge generally or simply we create a pearl in our belly where this largest circle is. This is the Dantian. And this pearl can be used in many, many ways. Today, we're going to stay simple with it and use it as a focal, focus point, a focal point. And we're gonna stay in the lower part of our orbit. So you see these fireballs out the back. That just means that that is yang chi, traveling upward up our back to our third eye. and It's actually to our upper palate. And these little blue balls are little balls of water and that's yin chi traveling down our front center line to the perineum. It's nice to begin in the lower body. So this illustration doesn't make it super clear, but if we draw our pearl up our center back to about the level of our waist and then draw it through our body and down our center front in this little orbit here, it actually encircles our Dantian. So here it's also, it's a little high, but. And in addition to encircling the Dantian, it blends and balances our Qi, both our Yang Qi and our Yin Qi. It's a beautiful illustration by Wan Li. Uh, connecting the microcosmic orbit centers with the I Ching. But what you see is this beautiful river or stream up the back of the body and down the front. So I'm going to ask those of you who are with me for the first time or doing the microcosmic orbit for the first time to Trust me. <laughs> and just let me guide you in this process. If your mind wanders, that's okay. Uh, cultivating a longer focus is one of the great gifts of the microcosmic orbit, but it does happen over time. And the suggestion is, if you notice that your mind has wandered or you lost the pearl or you're just getting frustrated. First thing is to release the frustration, bring your mind back to your navel, conjure the pearl there and release it back into the orbit and begin without criticizing yourself or getting impatient. So once again, let's sit well. 
And for the microcosmic orbit, it's especially important to place your tongue on your upper palate. You remember I said that the yang chi pathway ended at the upper palate. Well, the yin chi pathway begins the tip of your tongue. So by touching the tip of your tongue to your palate, you're connecting those two pathways. Sitting well. Now this time, instead of just a simple inhale, we're going to pause and connect with, visualize the chi field all around us. So we live within an atmosphere, yes, but it's also a field of life force energy surrounding the planet. You don't have to worry about the whole planet. Just see yourself sitting in a mist or a cloud of golden light. Inhale and draw that mist, that golden mist into your whole body. And for, for now, just a gentle exhale. Try to keep that beautiful mist inside. Another breath, inhaling, golden mist. Gentle exhale. Now we're going to add to that. Start the same way. We inhale our life force, golden mist. But now as we exhale, we draw that mist into our belly. So there is an energetic space called the Dantian. Don't worry about how big it is, how much it can hold. It's energetic. So there's not a physical limitation. So inhale, fill yourself. Exhale. Bring that beautiful mist into your dantian. Continue the breath that way. And begin to see the dantian glowing more brightly, perhaps feeling more dense. As you keep Nourishing your Dantian with that beautiful chi, that beautiful golden light. Reach deep inside yourself and draw up into the center of your Dantian, a beautiful luminescent pearl, and hold it there. Let's use our exhale a little bit. We're still inhaling and exhaling. Now let's actually, let's inhale that mist directly into our Dantian. And as we exhale, we use that gentle pressure that the exhale produces to squeeze the pearl just a little bit, help it draw in that golden mist. Lacquer another layer onto itself. See the pearl more clearly, more substantially, more brightly. Now inhale directly into the pearl. And as you exhale, draw the pearl straight down to your perineum. So the perineum is a spot between your gonads and your anus at the absolute bottom of your torso. It's a very powerful energy center. Hold the pearl there. Inhale into the pearl again. And as you exhale, draw it backward over your tailbone to your sacrum. Hold it there, another energy center. Take a breath in and out of the energy center and the pearl. Inhale into the pearl. Exhale. Now draw it up your spine to your natural waist, to Ming Men. 
Same thing, hold it there, breathe in and out of that center. Inhale into the pearl. Now with the exhale, draw it straight through your body to your navel. Take a breath in and out of your navel. Beautiful. Inhale into the pearl. Exhale, draw it down to the sexual palace. This energy center is on your center line just above the top of your pubic bone. Breathe there. Inhale into the pearl again. Now exhale, draw it down your center line back to your perineum. Hold the pearl there, take some regulating breaths, replace your tongue onto your palate if it's wandered. Now we're going to draw the pearl through that same exact pathway with fewer stops along the way. Inhale into the pearl. As you exhale, draw it back over your tailbone and up your spine to your waist. Breathe there. Inhale into the pearl. Draw it directly through your body to your navel. Hold it there. Inhale into it. Exhale, draw it down your center line back to the perineum. And do this a couple of times with me guiding you. Inhale, up your center line and back over tailbone, up your spine to your natural waist. Take a breath. Breathe the pearl through your body to your navel. Take a breath. Draw the pearl down your center line in front, back to your perineum. And a breath. Inhale. Draw the pearl up your center line and back to your natural waist. With the exhale, draw it through your body. So don't hang out at big men. With an inhale, draw it down center line and front back to the perineum. Take a breath. Same again. Inhale up your spine to your waist. Exhale through your body. Inhale down your center line in front, back to the perineum. Let's stay with that. I'm going to let you try it on your own. Good. Next time you're at your navel, pause there, take a couple of natural breaths, but hold the pearl at your navel. And you can continue moving the pearl with your breath. This is an orbit, no beginning and end, and it's smooth ultimately. So let's take a breath into the pearl. With the exhale, drop it into that pathway and feel it traveling through that pathway, allowing your breath to deepen into its natural cadence.
if you're an experienced practitioner of microcosmic orbit, remember to use your rocking, your pumps, at least your sacral pump. You may not feel you need it to move the pearl, but it can deepen the cultivation. If you, your mind wanders without judgment or self-criticism, bring your focus back to your navel. Take a couple of breaths to re-conjure your pearl. Then exhale, drop it back into that orbit and let it flow. It. Wherever you are in your saddle orbit, allow your pearl to travel on until it returns to your navel and hold it there. Just hold the pearl there. Let the flow of chi that we've created settle down. Now inhale into your pearl. And as you exhale, draw it into your body and slightly downward. Return your pearl to the Dantian. Beautiful. See the pearl settling into your Dantian. Sometimes when we do energetic practices, we can release energy that's stale or stagnant. So we want to draw that into the Dantian also. We do that by stacking our, this is Lao Gong, extremely powerful porous spot in our body. We stack them without touching. And then we spiral them. So to show you, I'm spiraling around my neck, but we want to spiral around the Dantian. Uh, let's go clockwise first and do that. 12 times. Can move quickly, doesn't need to be super slow. Reverse the direction nine times. And done. Um, Rest. Let's bring down heaven to close our practice. Inhaling up and drawing sun's yang chi down to the earth. Coming up again, drawing the moon's yin chi down to the earth. Last time to the stars, drawing the stars' cosmic energy to the earth. 